project was announced in 2012 by the Prime Minister um, with the, uh, the vision of sequencing 100,000 genomes within the NHS. So there are a number of threads to the programme. Uh, one is about transforming the NHS so that we will be able to uh, routinely use next generation sequencing in patient care. And then the other aspect of the programme is to try and better unite the samples, the data and the consent that we take for clinical testing so that we can also use uh, the data that we generate for research. So what uh, the talk I was giving today and the session I was leading was about the Genomics England Clinical Interpretation Partnership. So this is what we've called the bringing together of the clinical and academic community to work with the programme to optimise the research potential. Um, so what uh, has happened is about this time last year we put out an advert and got a massive response from the clinical academic community within the UK who self-organised and came forward proposing GSIP domains. So for example within cancer there was one for breast cancer, one for colorectal cancer, prostate cancer and so forth. So this was the community self-organising into uh, sizeable groups, a good 50 people in each of these domains putting forward a research plan how they would work with us to optimise the programme, to help with our interpretation of the genome data and also perform research to yield new discoveries from that data. So it was a really good session today bringing together some of the leads of the GSIP domains in front of a broader audience to update the audience on what we're doing within the programme in terms of GSIP and take some questions. So in terms of clinical practice, um, what we're doing is setting up the end-to-end -end process to be able to deliver, deliver whole genome sequencing within the NHS. And we recognise in a sense that's quite futuristic, but these things take time. So over the course of the programme and by the end of it, we would um, aim to be able to use this as a routine clinical test. It may be that it's a test that we don't perform in everyone. That's still quite likely in 2017. It won't be a standard of care. But in five years time, it may be beyond that. So it's setting up the structures from the sample acquisition, from how it's processed within molecular pathology, how we handle the sample, getting the processes in place for more routine acquisition and processing of fresh tissue, delicate molecular friendly fixation of tissue, through to the whole genome sequencing, the samples going to the biorepository, um, how they're sequenced, and then how the data are processed, stored, interpreted and then returned back to the clinician and patient at the end. So there's a lot of different stages um, that need to be harmonised and unified across the NHS. We know that there's a lot of molecular testing goes on, there's lots of panel testing undertaken in different hospitals, panel, taken, um, panel testing undertaken for research, but, but there's quite a lot of inconsistency um, and there's quite a lot of inequity of access so that there are, there's a lot of work that needs to be done but the clinical goal is that we get everything in place within the NHS so that this becomes smoother, it becomes more rapid and it becomes more consistent. At the beginning of the programme effectively I think the way we're talking to patients is that this is going that, that the time scale of the data generation will be essentially one of a research time scale. We can't guarantee when we get the data back. We don't know where they'll be in their cancer journey by the time we do get the data back. Um, it may be that the data are relevant and they will be returned to the patient. It's just we can't guarantee that it will be in a time scale that can influence their clinical care. However, as we shorten that time scale, as the programme progresses, we would then aim to more realistically be using the genome data to inform patient decision making. And Ideally, what we'd like to do is work with the appropriate bodies to try to better align the availability of clinical trials based on molecular markers so that we can not only tell the patient what molecular markers they have, but they also have options that are, that are available to them through the genome testing. That is one of the things that we need to develop through the programme and again that's at the sort of latter end of the process is being able to feed back the data in a format that is useful and interpretable both to the clinician looking after the patient and also to the patient themselves and of course for each cancer patient we're sequencing two genomes the germline genome and the tumour genome and each of those genomes can yield different types of relevant information so we need to be clear that we have the structures in place to deliver 
both those germline findings, which might have uh, longer term implications or implications for the family, and also the, the findings from the somatic sequencing of the tumour, which are more likely to impact more directly on their cancer care. As ever, what I am constantly inspired and heartened by is working within, with people within the NHS, and they have many challenges, uh, many shortcomings to the environment within which they work, and yet, almost without fail, all of our um, partners within the genomic medicine centres are bending over backwards to make the changes in their molecular pathology processes, to identify the patients, to consent them, which is a lengthy undertaking, and to really get this project off the ground and moving. And I think that that is absolutely inspiring because the NHS is pressed. They, they're looking after many sick patients, but they also have this focus to do something extra and over and above the, the most immediate demands of their jobs.